This is One on One with Jasper Cole, Hollywood's bad guy, and so much more. Actor, talent manager, producer, and more. Now he's sitting down with today's top newsmakers from entertainment, politics, pop culture, and beyond. This is One on One with Jasper Cole. Woohoo! All right. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And welcome to One on One with Jasper Cole. This is your host, Mr. Jasper Cole, and we are coming to you live from Hollyweird, California. We're right here at Temple Bay Studios. So happy to be back with you guys. Please follow us on sh- uh, social media at uh, Facebook as J- uh, Jasper Cole. You can go to my website, jaspercole.com. There's a link for one-on-one with Jasper Cole. And then uh, Twitter and Instagram is Jasper Cole says S A Y. Yes. But anyway, let me get to my very special guest today. I am joined by two wonderful actors. They're both writers, they're producers, soon to be podcasters in terms of a scripted series. First, let's welcome Emmy winning actor, Mr. Monty Sharp. Hey, buddy. I just like saying that. I just, do you like how I just keep introducing you? Emmy winning actor, Monty Sharp. Cool. Not That's, everyone can say that. Not, not everyone can say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's Good nice for, to hear you say that. And, and let me also say that Monty is now a client of Newman Thomas Management. That's right. Charles Newman's company. Very glad Poor to be thing. a new client. Yeah. <laughs> how is Charles? See, he's, He's hanging in there, right? He's great. Yeah, yeah, I think he lives in Atlanta. He's working hard. He's yeah. working hard at it. Yeah, and of course, the, we saved the beauty for last. Of course, uh, Katrina. Yes, Sanjinetto. Sanjinetto. Neto. But I like to just cat if you're nasty. Yes. Yes. Hi, darling. Hi. So, can you believe we're actually sitting? Face to face? Well, on a podcast. I know, this is crazy. It's been so it's crazy, wild. right? It's beautiful. So, full yeah. disclosure, um, Monty and Kat and I are soon going to be working on a new scripted uh, serial podcast called Gone. Mm-hmm. And thanks to Kat who mm-hmm. brought us in on this. Well, we're thanking her now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Thank her now because we don't know. No, no. It's going to be, it's going to be great. Um, because that's, you know, that's the newest thing now is yeah. because of blackout with mm-hmm. Rami Malek. And of course, before that dirty John and right. then, uh, uh, homecoming. homecoming. Yeah. Homecoming. Yeah. And there's been many others, but those right. three have kind of become a high profile that that's sort of, uh, we're giving it a shot and see yeah. how it goes. But Kat is a, an amazing writer, and we actually connected through Park Overall, yeah. who most of you know, Park was a guest on my show, and uh, Kat Ooh. has created... I want to hear that. Cr- oh, it's on iTunes. I oh, that. you should, yeah. She called in from the, ma- the mountaintop. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, so Kat has created a wonderful comedy. Um, are we, we're not naming we're it. We're not naming, well, cause... we're not disclosing the name. Right. That's a little secret, but, it but we is... can call it Crime Corner. Yeah, for now we'll call Crime, Crime Corner, Corner. Yeah. and it's yeah. a um, it's a comedy that's mm-hmm. it's a, parody. a per- parody similar, better than but similar to like a Brooklyn Nine Nine or the right. old Barney Miller, right. for those of you who are over fifty, or or you watch <laughs> TV Land, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. So that's how we connected. Right. And then I met, well, actually, Monty and I are just officially meeting today. Yes. Um, and so we're going to be embarking on this new journey coming up. But I want to get back to, first of all, let's, let's talk about how your journey began in the whole entertainment industry, Monty. I know oh, you, wow. you're from the, you're a fellow Southern, I'm from Georgia, uh, you're from Louisiana. Yeah. It's an hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might have to slice that up. We might have up. to do it in No, parts. no, we <laughs> gonna, I, we're going to get around No, I'm here. talking about his long. Um, and, she's, she's intimating that she's gonna, I he's going to hit all, the he's highlights. he's from the South. I know, but he's <laughs> so going to hit that. the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Fellow Southerner. Yeah. Louisiana. Right. What Monroe. Northeast. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know Maurice? See, we're going to do Maurice, Louisiana, think... not the person. Oh, no. Two lovely uh, people go, I know. Oh, you're from Monroe. You know Maurice? <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, yeah, his know. dad works at the station. <laughs> you know Maurice know. and them, don't you? Yeah. No, uh, Lafayette and sure, Maurice, Lafayette. Louisiana. I have okay. friends that live there. So, okay, yeah, But Monroe's they, a small town, right? Yeah, Monroe's a pretty small town, but yeah. we got a lot of like uh, national sort of runoff publicity from uh, the Duck Dynasty, which oh. is across the river in West Monroe. Right. So, um, is that the publicity you really wanted? Well, we take what we can get in Monroe, but uh, I would think yeah. you were much more uh, famous way because you were hitting long it big long before they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I had come and gone by the time they came on the scene. Yeah. Right, but, but you uh, left there to go to college, right? I did to acting to, school, North Carolina North School Carolina, of the Arts. Great school, <laughs> great school, wonderful time there. Did uh, you did you do art uh, acting and stuff in high school? 
I did. I started yeah. acting when I was a kid. Wow. And, uh, you know, I was very active in high school, forensic speech tournaments, things like that. I was a bit of an overachiever. My wow. dad owned um, uh, laundromats. Oh, and okay. So we had to work at the laundromat after school, which I hated. That's a great, so, that's a lucrative business. Uh, uh, listen, it was a ball buster when oh, you were 15 or 16. Because now it's lucrative, but we'll talk about that later. True, yeah. <laughs> But I, I did anything that I could just right. to avoid having to go there. So I was a bit of an overachiever. Football, basketball, choir, student government. Wow. It goes on and on. Um, but that's where I started acting. Okay, you know, so you got competing. the bug. Got there. the bug, loved competing. You know, I used to do dramatic, humorous interpretation, debate, extemporaneous God, I feel speaking. So underachieved already, <sighs> don't just, you, Kat? Still Look, debates. I, I yeah, was just well. trying to fill my time. I know. You know? Yeah, just biding time till, till you <laughs> yeah. left. Till I could get out. Right. And then I started in radio. So I was a radio news anchor. Oh, this is a uh, old this home. This is pretty for you. familiar. Yeah. yeah, this is a pretty familiar. Like, and you did radio in Louisiana or in Monroe? Yeah, Mon- wow. KNOE TV, CBS. There and, you go. Uh, so I did that for like a year. I was still in college at the time, and I uh, knew that I wanted to be an actor. Didn't really see the radio thing going in the direction that I wanted to go right. in. So I just. Uh, but it was performing, kind of. It was a happy, it was a compromise. Yeah. yeah, I was on the radio. People recognize, oh, you're the news guy. Right. You know? They'd say, oh, you don't look like your voice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, so I bounced out of there one morning, one Saturday morning, carted up a whole day's worth of news and got on a plane and went to North Carolina and uh, wow. auditioned there, got accepted, did a couple years there and then moved to New York. That's where I started, you know. Yeah, you went really. to, to the Big Apple. Yeah, man. Did you think about coming to the West Coast or was New York? It was just the next logical you know step what happened? for an actor. It's just this weird thing happened when I was a kid. I saw this movie called Defiance with Jan Michael Vincent. Oh, God, yeah. And for some reason, the, the you know, he was living in the Bronx, I yes. think, or whatever. Oh, God, you really pulled <laughs> I hadn't thought of that one in a long time. I that movie, man. He just passed recently, so. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, God that's right. right. Yeah. He did, didn't he? Yeah. But yeah, he had quite a career at one time. But He did. But you saw that, and it was in New York. It was New York at that point. I just thought, that's it. I, I want to go to New York. That's yeah. where I want to be. Had you ever been never oh wow yeah. i've never even been out of the state oh my I god went to audition for you know school of the arts in north carolina and then you know it was a couple of years after that that i i got a job with alan albert which was like a summer stock dance yes, company right so i did my summer there in uh, new jersey at action park so you just literally were like a fish out of water ah, dude, in new york. i was like yeah it was like i thought this is, sounds crazy but this is true this is absolutely true i thought to myself at the time how the hell <laughs> Are they going to land a plane <laughs> in the middle island? of New York City? You know, <laughs> this is going to be something to see. You know? I love that. I just and, no, you know, and they have two two airports. And they have two, you know. Gomer Pyle. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, I'm still waving at people. I got off the plane. I'm waving. <laughs> hey, how y'all, hey, doing? How y'all yeah. doing? Yeah, yeah, you know. And this was New York was not. Times Square was not what it is now. No. Yeah. No. Times Square it was, was not a, Disneyland. No. It was very hardcore. <laughs> it was a challenge. It was hardcore yeah. back then. Yeah. yeah. So, so you get off the bus or the train at, at Port Authority. If you had to go east, you had to go across, you know, 42nd 40th Street. Mostly. Street, yeah. That was a big challenge for me at that time. You know, I was oh. really very skittish of everything. But, wow. Yeah. But... And then you started doing theater. I did. In, started off Broadway. Yeah. and um, Which is... Kind of what I thought, and it was we all should do as actors. You know, I'm learning now with the, the new generation; they don't really do theater. They right. do social media and YouTube and web series and, <laughs> and stuff Facebook, like that. But yeah, in our yeah. day, it was theater. It was theater. Yeah, it was. That was yeah. a big goal: was just to get there, get an agent, and start auditioning. Yeah, and, you know, that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to get in a good show. You wanted to, you know, maybe hook up with a playwright or right. something like that. And, you know. and then you ended up doing daytime. Ended up doing daytime. I did a show at the Public Theater. Right. And um, that was where I got a note. Was that in, Joseph pa- Joe Paps? That was Joe Papp. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. And uh, Betty Ray, who was the casting oh. director at the time at Guiding Light, saw the show. Yeah. And she left a note in my box after that show and said, I think I have a part for you. Wow. And uh, That's how it used to happen. Right? I mean, like even out those, here, yeah. it used to happen that way 25 years ago. Right. Where people could, casting directors could actually... <laughs> give you a part they didn't have to go through 45 corporate executives yeah yeah so uh that was a that was a huge day for me you know that changed my life wow in fact it took me from like you know a path in the theater into television right and that was something that i really didn't think of too much up to that point yeah i think there's something to be said about the things that you're not 
hyper focused on sometimes. You know, like you, we kind of want something and we've put all our attention on it. And meanwhile, something good's right here and we're exactly. like, we don't want that. So, right. Yeah. 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 So that changed you. I'm sure financially it changed you and oh, changed, everything. Yeah. It changed everything. It changed my family. You know, it changed. Wow. Were they whole... fans of the show? Uh, my mom was, yeah. Because been... I grew up watching the CBS soaps. Oh, did you? Okay. So it was, yeah, it was Young and the Restless, Guiding Light, As the World Turns, because that's what my grandmother watched. Okay. So what, whoever was babysitting you, you know, you had to yeah. sit there and watch it. I used yeah. to, I grew up with the Guiding Light on. I remember the Guiding Light, you yeah. know, and that whole opening with the oh, yeah. lighthouse and all that. But I never thought I would wind up on wow. any of those shows, really. Well, so I mean, but coming pretty... from theater, also the training, you, because as people know, you have to do like a whole show in a day. So you were learning a shitload of dialogue yeah. in one day. Were you, were you nervous at first? I was not. I had a very sort of naive attitude about well, it. Because when I you're thought, young, you don't, yeah. You're not thinking about that. And it's like doing plays, you know, it's like you line, look, people say, how do you remember all those lines? It's what it, that's what the work is. Except in know? the play, you had like three to four weeks rehearsal. Right. You know, right. So, exactly. I mean, you had like two nights maybe or. Right. Yeah. But so. you have little tricks. You know, there's things you can do when you're on a soap and. Yeah. You know, if you they're if bad, you they're bad day. habits you can get into, right? <laughs> yeah. I had a, a, an agent one time and said, um, if you do a soap, you either, you stay either one year and leave or you just do three years and leave. Yeah. Or just. Stay there. Sign your life away and stay. Yeah. But, I mean, that's back, you know, there used to be kind of a stigma, it, like there was a hierarchy yeah. in the industry. That's no longer no, at all. No. But um, so many great people have come out of soaps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great, I, people like to say it's a training ground. It's just you know, a great job. It's just a great job. Period. And it's a lot of challenges. I mean, the challenges yeah. are, it's a tremendous challenge to get in there day in and day out and deliver. Now, can you imagine, though, if you, could you imagine if you had stayed I mean, the show went off like ten years. I don't know how many yeah, years ago. About that, but you yeah. know, there were char- there were actors who had been on there for oh, yeah. a long, long time. Yeah, um, it's it's the same way. I was always fascinated when I found out like Broadway shows yeah. will have like chorus members that have been in there. Like a friend of mine posted yesterday, he was in New York at a going away party for his girlfriend, who's been in I forgot which show twenty two years. Wow. Mm. Wow. It's kind of like wow. working at a corporation and, yeah. or your company retires. Yeah. I mean, it has, it's one of the long running ones, but That's you know, amazing. she probably makes a few thousand a week or what? Yeah. I mean, nice life. Yeah. In Manhattan. So we have yeah. to remember like there's that whole thing that happens, but you wanted to move on and do other stuff. Did you come right to California from there? No, after? I stayed after I left Guiding Light. I did a couple more shows. I did um, this very short-lived show called The City. Yes, on ABC. That was with Morgan Fairchild. Morgan Fairchild, and Debbie Morgan. And, yes, um, that was a lot of fun. That had a real concept from the production. That side. That almost felt like a nighttime show. They wanted it to be. It was slick, very and, did you, movie, like, slick and polished. I heard about it, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, one yeah. of their big things was they were going to Steadicam everything. Right. So instead of the three camera setup for soaps. The camera was going to be like gonna move. moving through the set, so there are very few cuts. Right. The problem with that was the deeper you get into a scene, when somebody screws up, you got to go all, all the, way the way back, back to the top right. and do the whole Just thing. Just like film. Again. Yeah, exactly. So it got to be very costly. That was very costly. Long days, a lot of uh, you know, starts and stops. Yeah, and, and a lot of people getting irritated, and you know, so wow. it was an interesting. Yeah. Didn't last very long though. Yeah. Should have just done reality because that's the start of like the idea that of reality. That was before. Yeah. You know, That's they would just true. let it roll. And now reality kind of, well, I mean, there's still four soaps on the air, but reality has sort of replaced the nighttime soaps. Mm-hmm. You know, really, when you think about it, those all those housewife shows that I watch are, um, <laughs> I know, people are always amazed. <laughs> I watch but, a couple. Um, they're like the Dynasty, Dallas, Falcon Crest. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. Knott's Landing. Yeah. They kind of replace those, you know, it's that same kind of glitz and glamour and living vicariously through. Yeah. And it is. So yeah, soaps were all about that. Yeah. Extreme wealth and yeah. decadence. And, yeah, exactly. You know. And then you ended up on the West Coast. Then I ended up on the West Coast with um, what did I come out here for? Oh, you know, oh. honestly, why I came out here in the beginning was to escape the winter. Oh, yeah. I was like, I oh, blame the, the, you. the blizzard. I think it was ninety eight, and the whole city shut down. The no. subway system was shut down. Everything was shut down. I was like, you know what? I'm out of here. here. Yeah, I'll be back in May. Did you come out for pilot seasons any during the time? Yeah. 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 When we actually had pilot seasons. Exactly. Those starting, I'm starting like the old (laughs) guy when there was a real pilot season (laughs) and you could actually 
come out and get auditions. Mm-hmm. And because pilots used to be used sort of to give people breaks, right? You know, they were looking for new talent. Yeah. Now they're all cast with cast contingent with names and yeah. you know that whole thing. And you got to have a social media account with right. a certain amount of followers. And yeah, yeah, different time, different time. Totally but different you're in, you stayed in the game. That's Definitely. the thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is, you know, since I was a kid, I've been doing this, and yeah. it's like once you get past a certain point, you go, well, what else is there? And let's really, keep it real. You, you know, this business is sexist, ages, but for men, you know, as we get older, unless I mean unless you're Denzel or whatever. I mean, we we could become character actors. Right. And that's where all the gr- great parts are. Right. And and women that are already character actors can have longevity mm-hmm. also, but you know, with the ingenues and the the leading ladies, it's tough for it's, ladies. It's tough. It's I always tough say you got to transition to character parts. Yeah. But if they've already been established like a Morgan Freeman, I know Morgan really well, you okay. know, and so she, you know, she has a you, you got to make a decision am I going to Keep the beauty going, yeah. With all the stuff, yeah. All the or um, <laughs> just let it go and be, yeah. you know, be 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 natural. <laughs> Thank God we're not on camera anymore. But yeah. So anyway, it's that's what happens. But you've, yeah, you're you've got amazing uh, credits. Your reel is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Cat and I've already talked about this. You know, the moment I watched. Monty's real life's like he's like Sam Jackson. Mm-hmm. He's like a, I have a feeling a little more uh, sweeter, nicer Sam Jackson. Because you can, you can also play a nice guy. Right. You can play a good guy. Sure. Where Sam is kind of like, Sam's kind of like me. I'm kind of stuck playing bad Edgy. people. Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't, tra- I don't transfer nice on camera. Okay. But, okay. but I could see where you could, you can be a good guy. Yeah. As well. I do. I tend to play, you know, usually. Really, really sort of squeaky clean, really nice dudes, or or corrupt, or bad guys. But, yeah. And you yeah. do a lot of co- you've played a lot of detectives and cops. What is it with me and cops? Yeah. Right, like a lot of cop roles. I mean, it's great. Like, There's a lot of parts. It works out pretty well. Right. But I'm always like, you know, get an audition for a cop, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> this might go my way. Yeah. Well, you have also you're you know big guy and Maybe you fit the it. yeah yeah I yeah. could do the real stern thing. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Perfect attorney. Could be really yeah. stern. You know? Yeah. But. And so more recently, um, Monty's been on Bosch, the hit yes. series Bosch. Yes. And we great love that. Great experience there. Love, love that, that show. show. Great, great show, people. Great and people. Great. It's an example of being, keeping contacts going and relationships going for a long time. Absolutely. Because you knew the producer for a long time. And- I did. I did a play of his, um, Eric Overmeyer, great playwright, a lot of different plays on and off Broadway, you know, and uh, we happened to meet back in mid-90s or early 90s. I did a show of his in Baltimore. And it was a real tough show. It was a very, very uh, sort of significant break for me at that time. It was a role that spanned the life of Scott Joplin. Mm. And so the play took place from the time he was in his 20s up until the time he died as an older man dying of syphilis. Wow. So they had auditions and they were on the fence about what to do. Do you cast an older actor and have that actor play young? Or do you cast a younger actor and have that actor play older? And so they went with a younger actor who eventually... Who's had syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't find that until later. That was on my resume. And, that was, <laughs> and that's what nailed the... That's what got you the part. It was so in special skill. They, you know? <laughs> survived syphilis. Yeah. Oh wow. God. But that's so, a great example of where you made that connection. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a real sort of collaborative effort in terms of writing. <laughs> And he was writing as we were rehearsing, and we were all discovering things. So it's almost dramaturging as yeah. you're... Dale yeah. Shores, who was here earlier, we did a show. We were just talking about that's his process as well. Sometimes when he's doing a new play or he's he's doing Worksh- it... Like workshop workshopping it as, as, it's as it's happening. Yeah, that's a real rich... That's the beauty when you have the playwright, yeah. the writer there. Yeah. Yeah. You have such a feeling of like you're contributing to it and... You know, they're sort of relying on your analysis mm-hmm. as an actor to sort of flesh out some of the details. And then when you have a question, right the there. writer's right there. Right there. So yeah. the director's not having to interpret what right. he thinks the writer may have wanted. Yeah. 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 And it really just created a relationship and a bond that didn't go away. Right. You know, and so all these years later, you know, he still thinks of me from time hey, to Monty, time. Hey, Monty, I, I yeah. got you apart. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's, what, that's what you live for as an actor. Yeah. To have that. Yeah. But you don't get that unless you... You know, this is what I tell young actors, you know, and I was the same way. I don't know if you were, but, you know, when you're young, you just want to, you want it all to happen so fast. Yeah. I got to get from A to F. Yeah. Like, 
and I always say you gotta enjoy the journey. Yeah. But we're we're so fat. We're we're not living in the moment a lot of right. times. You know that's that's, that's hard when this you're young. making it thing. Yeah, that's the thing you want to make it. There's no making get it. There, yeah. You were making it the whole time. Yeah. We just didn't understand what that was because yeah. we thought it was going to look a certain way. Right. Yeah. And we've it's it's the peaks and the valleys. That's still a you know a, something to keep in mind even today. You know. Oh God. We yeah. can get ahead of ourselves and want to do this and want to do that, and it's like, hey, when you're on a set or you're in a scene or you're in a moment. Take it in. Take it. Take that moment in. in. You know, really, really live that moment. Yeah, I say often too because the longer you've been doing it, you know, I used to. I mean, I just eat, lived, and breathed show business, and I love going to the set, and I don't care if I have to be there that day, and blah. Yeah, I just love being around it, and you know, and now I, I love the work, but you know, I'm older or whatever, and I always say I just love between action and cut. (laughs) <laughs> you yeah. can't describe what that is, though, right? Yeah, if you don't do it, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. I agree with you 100%. You don't like, know what that is. Yeah. You can't describe it. Like, But when it happens... And then it's over. And then it's like, oh, fuck, now i got to go home. You know, i got to... How gotta much longer? Out. My whole thing now is like, how long... When am I getting out of here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was the guy that wouldn't leave. And now I'm like, oh, fuck. Can, where's, and the early calls, just forget it. <laughs> I will literally start crying almost if I have like a 5 a.m. call. Oh. I'll just be like a, a child. Yeah. Like, I can't get up with that. So it's just interesting how things come around. But I still love the doing. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a different experience in that. I used to be so anxious and so amped up. Like, I want to hurry up and do it. Right. And I'd show up and I'd be like, can, can we go on now, you know? And uh, that was a part of me not really enjoying all of it. You right. Know? Saying hello in the morning. Right. To, People taking it all in up or yeah you know um just talking to your other actor your fellow actors on a break or something like right. that you know so i enjoy that part of it a lot more now i'm not a great big fan of the early calls but or the late nights you know see two, well i'm a late you know? i'm a night person so call me at 1 a.m and i'll <laughs> i'm up i actually got a call one evening on bosch my my set call was 12 Midnight. Oh, I would have been in heaven. <laughs> I was like, I was so confused. Like, I, do I go to bed at do I go to bed at eight and get up? And, well, and, I have that problem with the early calls because I stay up to like two in the morning. Okay, so when you have like a five a.m., I'm like, shit, I'll just stay up stay because up. yeah. So <laughs> all nighters. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you decided to come to the West Coast because if you hadn't come to the West Coast, you wouldn't have met Cat Cat sitting and, next to you. Yeah, and then yeah. we wouldn't have met. And so, how did you two? I'm the link. Besides you having the, the same, pro- I'm the Kevin Bacon. you had the same probation officer, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. Back to our show. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no. So you guys met. We met actually eleven years ago. Wow. Was it 11 through a mutual, years ago? Oh, almost eleven years ago through wow. a mutual friend. I'm yeah. terrible with dates. Yeah, he doesn't even yeah. probably know what well, day it is right now. And so, Cat is a native. Uh, Los An- well, Orange California, County. Yeah. Orange County, yeah, native yeah. California, and you grew up here, and you've been a you've been a fan of television and comedy, especially comedy, comedy right? Yeah, tell Mostly everyone comedy. your love for you like all the sitcoms. Sitcoms, I do. I love. I still love a real sitcom, and there's not very many of them left. No, but I mean, I'm. I was. It's really interesting because I met Eric McCormick at Menchie's, and <laughs> I mean, it was. He's the only. Will and Grace, or I've I've met, you know, cast member, and went in there, and it was like all these kids, and I was like, oh my god, I was with a friend of mine, and then I look over and I'm like, ooh, hot dad, wait a minute, <gasps> that's Will, and so I said, get your yogurt, we're gonna bum rush him at the door. He's like, oh my god, you're not gonna say anything. I'm like, of course I am. So I sat. That's very reserved, as you will find out. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, very reserved. Just well, another wallflower. Selective. <laughs> yeah. So I sat tr- strategically so that when he walked out, I could step. My- put my foot out and i said you might want to get a restraining order <laughs> and he stopped laugh we chit chatted he was very sweet and i said oh you know i really miss seeing you guys on tv and he said well you know i am on tv i'm on this other show What's and i said no, yeah, i don't watch that nobody's watching it. yeah i don't watch that one <laughs> but and then ironically it was crazy that they ended up doing that political short oh which brought the show back and it brought the show back and so what like, I was going to say, Monty, that's such a typical act. Eric, like, Eric can't just take in the fact that 
she liked Will and Grace. He wanted to make sure you knew. Well, I'm yeah, on another I'm show. I'm on another show. Like, I, don't, I don't care about that. It's like, Who well, wait. That? I'm. Yeah. You didn't forget about me, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I also told him I had seasons two through the final. Right. So then the like, restraining order was coming out. Right. <laughs> exactly. Then he's slowly backing <laughs> to or the door. Or backing the scenes out with him in Menchie's. But, um, but yeah, there's very few. I mean, Frasier was, you know. Right. Great show. A great show. Great, great show. I, I did was, you like Cheers? I did like Cheers. Yeah. I did watch Cheers and um, Friends, of right. course. But the ultimate, like growing up with Lucy. Well, I was going to say, I mean, if you go back to like. Yeah. Go back to the classics. Right. Carol Burnett, Lucille Ball. Anybody now should know who those people are. Right. You know? Did you, did you also like the Norman Lear stuff? You oh, know, yeah. Maud. I mean, they just did. Did you watch oh, the yeah. new. Did the, I didn't uh, see the live. Yeah. I didn't see the live. But I did watch a lot of. My father is a huge fan of course, of a lot of, you know, that generation. He was born in 33. Okay. So he really would just shove everybody down my throat, you know, pretty much growing up. And I was exposed, you know, he's a huge Frank Sinatra fan right. who I share his birthday. Oh. And <laughs> I'm like, why did you name me Frankie? Um, but he's, you know, so he, I, I learned about a lot of these people, Mel Brooks. The Rat and, Pack and all Yeah, the, the Rat yeah. Pack and all the classics and people now that I really appreciate. Right. And you can tell what's lacking. Yeah, well, that. true. You know, because there was that period in the 70s, 80s, and 90s when three cameras that comes were so big. I mean, and then it all kind of went away for a while. And right. then it's kind of come, well, it's come back slowly. It's four camera now. You know, it went to four camera. But okay. the single camera kind of took over with Sex in the City and stuff like that. Well, I think Modern Family, too. Right? Modern Family. Yeah, modern. Yeah. So many of those are yeah. Yeah. single, like a film, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, which that but, was your idea for our comedy coming up right right to do you it more that? like a parks and recreation or right yeah um yeah yeah but i i likewise loved all the norman Le- you know the good times yeah. all maude great all in the family yeah uh all of it yeah really so great stuff. It. yeah um did you did you like the uh live uh I, I liked and- a lot of it i love the Je- i thought the jeffersons i i thought that worked a lot better than the yeah. all in the family yeah like I love Marissa Tomei. Yeah, I thought she was great. Yeah, she did. Do she good. was. Yeah, good. Woody Some of the, was a little. I, the other, I know, so the casting was weird. I it mean, you never know who we never know who they actually. All the people they went to before they got who they got who they got. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I thought the Jeffersons all came off a lot better. Better. It's like I love Woody Harrelson, but oh, I felt like he was a little bit out of a his... A little miscast, yeah, right? Yeah, I felt a little bad for him. I thought he's, yeah. doing, it, you know, he's doing his best, but, but it didn't, didn't quite fit like a glove. When you, you know? do that sort of... I think when you're going to recreate, yeah, it's a very touchy thing. Right. Because you're going to have people, I think, that grew up watching that are just going to nitpick everything. Then, you, of course, you've got the creatives that are in there now that want to change it a little bit. Right. And yeah, it's a fine Whereas, line. like, yeah, Marissa was almost doing, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but she was doing almost a dead-on impersonation of Gene yeah. um, Stapleton. Stapleton. Yeah, yeah, God, I just yeah. blanked. Mm-hmm. I almost said Gene Smart. <laughs> but whereas Woody was kind of doing his own interpretation. Yeah. Uh, right. It was just uneven. You know what I felt like with Woody? Like, I felt like if he had, what he was doing was, he needed another week of rehearsal, and then he would have really found that character. Right. But I felt like I was watching it a very, a very good, good rehearsal work to find a character. Right. So That's a great point. They should have got yeah. a comedian, as it's opposed to mimicking Carol O'Connor. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know. Yeah, See, that's where it makes it hard. It Which makes is it hard tough because those characters are so I thought complex. The, you know? the, I didn't know who the guy was playing Meathead. Um, I didn't know oh, who that yeah. was. Is he either. from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Or so? He's definitely I think he's from done a, Saturday Night Live and he's done some other. But I thought he was pretty good. He was. Uh, I just didn't get Ellie Kemper as uh, a Gloria. Yeah, there were so many people I could think of, but um, the only the only in the Jeffersons, the only person I was really didn't I didn't care for Wanda playing. Weezy? I love Wanda. Yeah. Like her oh, Netflix special, is, I'll bow down to her. Yeah. But um, I didn't. I, that didn't work for me either. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. I thought I, I didn't. And I love Carrie Washington, but I just didn't. I wasn't feeling her. Yeah, as, uh, Roxy Roker. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. it was. A well, look. she has that real clean look, like Roxy did. Yeah, that's probably like a visual of possibly what. But and she did have the same. Yeah, visual yeah. But appeal, see, it's, yeah. it's again, it's hard it's, you to... can't take a, a, these types of classic shows, even if they did Lucy, which everybody wants to be Lucy, and you can't really take these types of shows. Deborah and, Messing would have to play Lucy. Well, see, okay, so Deborah Messing, and you know what's interesting? When Ellen DeGeneres was had her shows, she is really was very Lucy esque mm-hmm. in a lot of scenes. She's just and a she, nasty person. 
Yes, is she, she really? Horrible person. I don't oh, even care. I put really? it out there all the time. Really? Because oh, wow. I, 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 it's, a, it's like a PSA for me now. She's just a nasty person. Yeah, so. That's, so dis- that's so disturbing to yeah. hear. Yeah. You didn't know that, right? No. I a lot she of people was like don't. the sweetest. I know. You know. And I didn't mean to. No. it's. I, I just. Yeah. I but, but see, I'm, I, I'll yeah. always give due where talent is yeah. due. I know exactly what you're saying. She's very talented, though. Like, she yeah. did an appearance on Will and Grace. Well, we she played a nun. We were just talking about that. Sorry to cut you yeah. off. We were talking oh, about whether or not she's nice or you know, is she really like that Ooh, or is she like, well, not you know, good. be behind not the Not good. Scenes. And it's Sorry. it's coming. I mean, it's I've had my own thing and then I've got multiple sources mm-hmm. that. It's, but she is actually her her. Com- she has great comedic timing. Yes. That's what I recognized from her two sitcoms that right. she had. And then when she guest starred on Will and Grace. She it was, was good. She was very good. Yeah. And so I But I, I still you know want what? my money back from Mr. Wrong, the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. People yeah. said I didn't, I didn't see, see that. that. Nobody did. She was oh. still well, she was playing a straight woman. Yeah, but yeah. I mean there's a lot of gay women that can play straight. But yeah. yeah. But that was but, her, but anyway. Was it a yeah. comedy? It was a comedy oh, with yeah. um Matthew Modine, who played her love interest, I can't remember. Yeah, but anyway, I didn't mean that's to That's when you get stuck in the machine, I think, when people like, you did TV, you did this, now we want to put you in a movie. Yeah. Probably not necessarily the way to go. Probably but, not, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, so I, th- I think what I love about you, Kat, is you have, uh, when I met Kat, your passion for the, the comedy and what you're doing and your writing and just the way you eat, live, and breathe yeah, characters. I'm neurotic and, with it. But you also have such a knowledge of old television, new television. Right. I'm amazed how many um, actors I meet who they don't know any of the current shows. Mm-mm. They don't know what's on TV right now. That I can understand in a way, though, as far as why well, there is so well, many shows. Well, too many now. Too many. Yeah. But I feel like it's more important to go back, even with musicians and right. singers. Go if you you have to if you're a young artist, you got to go beyond um, Chris Brown. You got to go beyond Michael Jackson. Right. See where Michael Jackson got. What you got to go does. back to Little Richard. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. yeah, and even Bob Fosse. Yeah. There's various people that right. people take from, and you think that that person invented something that they didn't. Right. You see the influence. But as far as TV and and comedy and that sort of thing, I think it's really important to to kind of know the history. To kind of know, yeah. Which is what I like about Norman Lear. And you made a great point. Like we're looking at these. Um, well, these weren't really reboots. These are like reinterpretation. Well, no, it's just old redoing the exact scripts. Yeah. But there's still all these young audiences that don't know the original, right. so right. they're seeing it. Not but comparing seeing a weird it to right. mesh of it. I yeah. think you know, not to, the real thing. Right. And what do you think about? The re- all the reboots that are happening, the real oh. reboots. So far, Lord. I think Will and Grace is like the only one that's really well, not because it's the original the cast, right? Down to cameramen and people like that, which is important, right? But so Murphy Charmed. Brown tried it and it didn't work. Which one? Murphy Brown. Oh. They did it last year. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it, but Very see, like sure, Charmed yeah. is reboot, right? With all new people. All new people. Yeah, that's a problem. I was a huge Charm person as well. Yeah, all those seasons as well. I've you know. Well, they also made it. Um, darker and they, they did, they did and a whole just, different thing i mean you know I, I guess it's making it but i'm i haven't watched it because right. i'm i feel like you got to bring the original there's one day at a time they redid no yeah see that yeah. Too. Yeah. oh see she's Problem. Like, just if you're gonna that, reboot right? they canceled it yeah, yeah. yeah. yes because it's got to be the well, they did a latino version yeah, yeah i mean come on we could do all versions of one day you lose it <laughs> it was a single mom right right with her two daughters or newly divorced or whatever it was and uh-huh. like alice you know, it's I don't. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, from a producer's standpoint, it makes sense. It, yeah, it worked in the past. Right, cut your workload in half, put it up. You make some money and you move on if you have to. But, but I think you're right. I mean, Will and Grace, mm-hmm. part of it is because they look almost better than they mm-hmm. look. I mean, they look. It's almost like time stood still, and huh. yeah. they. I mean, like on Murphy Brown. Other than Faith Ford, who yeah. looked exactly the same, yeah. who's from Monroe, Louisiana, she is. Oh, she is. That's right. Uh-huh. That's yeah. right. She's a great. She's a great girl, lady. Also, okay. she used to work out at my gym. And but um, <laughs> but no, I think uh, Murphy, Rosario's the only one missing from Will and Grace who didn't come. He back. He died, right? Oh, oh no, they killed her off, but she didn't come back. She has Alzheimer's. She the does. Actress, does? Shelley Morrison. That's why. Oh, wow. I was thinking of the oh. the house painter on Murphy Brown. Right. He died. Right. Yeah, Shelley. Shelley's in the motion picture home. This is a hard right here. Rosario? The subject, <laughs> but uh, on the subject of Alzheimer's, I think I just read recently that David Milch has yes. Alzheimer's. And he, but he's at the point, I mean, he knows he does. So he's still at the beginning stages okay. where he's talking about it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just very think tragic. It's, yeah. it's so, it, it, it hits everybody, but I mean, mm-hmm. 
especially when someone has their mind has been such an important part of their f- career. Like yeah. Neil Simon had it. You oh, know? I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, like wow. it's just down to you know wonderful actors I know wow. who've who've had it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marion Mercer, you know these comedic people, and it, that's just uh, it's a horrible. I was reading a review of his HBO uh, Deadwood movie, Deadwood, and it was talking about how it was a real struggle for him to just write that movie because I think Alzheimer's that's when it was just and he recognizes starting that that might something be his was wrong, last, and yeah. I saw an interview with him. 60 minutes maybe he did an interview t- where he talked he, he knows he has it oh wow um and uh wow. that's just like wow. powerful he's a very interesting guy with a very very fast fast moving mind yeah so i could imagine that having something like that inside is <sighs> must be driving really. him my mad, mom was you know? a caregiver for alzheimer's patients and she also is a cancer survivor, and she said she would rather have cancer I agree. than no, that. Alzheimer's. She said it's the most, yeah, serious disease. Like she's anything but that. Yeah, wow. it's really. It's and they've not made a lot of. Progress. I mean, they know exactly what it is. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's like the plaque in the heart, but the plaque is building up in the brain. And I think it's a matter of if they can get to the point, like a, with the heart, how they've been able to cle- clean out the arteries. Yeah. You need to clean them. Maybe brain. they'll figure out a way to clean that mm-hmm. part of the. The brain, the brain out, but it's just. Wow. There is I just some correlate. Yeah. There's some link between open heart surgery and Alzheimer's what? for people who had it. Yeah, for people who have open heart surgery, oh, wow. there's some link. Oh, that oh, makes lovely. them more. Yeah, just eat greens. You got to go vegan. That's not, I'm like trying so hard. Are you hard. vegan? I'm like really no, trying. She's not I love well, vegan. Okay. I love that. <laughs> but I love no, people gonna, like that. I know, but I'm really like it's. You're it's, vegan except for In and Out. <laughs> well, no, I won't do In and Out or no, Taco but, Bell. Yeah. Well, that's not meat anyway. So you're not getting real meat, right? I don't know. I am really like it takes well. It's not something you can just for me, I guess, cut off like you know. Well, you you you're you're like cold. You're not going cold turkey. I have chicken, right? A little bit of chicken. I don't eat hamburger, right? It's a nice steak. Chickens are taking a beat, but that's why I don't want to eat chicken. I eat mostly. It's terrible. Poultry. Like but twenty the, million chickens died in like the floods in in I think North Carolina. Or oh, something is that right? This, this past oh, right, right. couple months. Yeah. Well, then something came out today. A study said that eating white meat chicken is no better than eating a lot of beef. Oh, as far no, see, so what I'm saying, cholesterol. Are you but they'll debunk, eat, they'll debunk oh, that next spinach. week. So God. yeah, greens. Okay, so we we're, we're going to talk now about our the show we're going to do coming up. Gone. Gone. Yeah, Bobcat mm-hmm. Irvin. Yeah. And Chanel, who I've called Chantal. <laughs> I was even convinced that I saw it written as Chantal. <laughs> yeah. so, Are you dyslexic? I am dyslexic. Yeah, me too. Did you see I sent you the screenshot you, yeah. finally? That yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, so we're going to embark on this new journey mm-hmm. of doing this uh, scripted. And I was saying to uh, Kat and I were talking about how important it's going to be to make sure, you know, because we're actors that we create these characters right. and that it's not just about laying down the voice right, right. you know right. we want to have people supporting us in this journey that realize we're we have to enter we have to create a full character and there has to be there's work that goes on in between the words right like in acting of course so it's not just reading your lines right so that's going to be that's an interesting uh, a challenge I, was, I don't know if you talked to or heard from bobcat today about the start date he was like, well, we can start next week, or we can wait until Jasper gets back. Oh. <clears throat> he was it's asking my Jasper. opinion about that. And I thought, the more <laughs> time, the better to do exactly that. Create right. characters, get some richness in the performance, and that way, once we start working, it's more of a real Organic. Well, yeah. that's a nice way to say it, but in actuality, it's the diva of the show. Oh, I, I, I love how suddenly back. I'm a diva. You're like a diva. I, I'm not even my character's not even the star. The real star is cat. <laughs> well, you know. yeah. But um, not so not not so much anymore. But but yeah, I agree with Monty. Yeah. I think the best way is to it's like a play. Yeah, it yeah. really is a play. Yeah, in many ways. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. It's a it's a really good story. Very good story. And it's you know there's so much truth in there that after I'd finished the script, I called Bobcat and I said. Oh my god! I said I'm really scared. Actually, I'm now scared of the rapture. That's like, always I'm, I'm a good. I'm on the biblical. Thing. That means he really wrote. Yeah, he wrote something really good. Yeah. And I had an epiphany and realized about the whole getting into heaven thing has nothing really to do with being a good person. No. Were you Catholic? 
Were you, were well, you raised Catholic? I, a little bit. My mom's been everything, unfortunately. Yeah, but the Catholic Church... She was raised re- Greek Orthodox. Okay. But at, when I was born, she was Mormon for a while. Right. Then she well, left that. We then already said Catholic there's going to be a whole script on your mom. Oh, my God. So. I'm telling you, she's living... Oh. Millions. Well, there's a, you know the story of, yeah. on that one. That's yeah, that's a reality show. She's, right her there. mom is my a mother. Show, right? My mother, Greek. She, someone should just be following her around with a camera, twenty four seven. Yeah, I would be in jail. Probably somebody would think that I do el- I'm elder abuse or something. I'm sure. I think you I, are abused from the way I'm you guys not. talk I'm to each other. I'm surviving. I'm trying to survive. To the way you talk to her, I, it's survival. Right. It's survival. It's if what I, you what you know. Yeah, like now I have to stand my ground, or she will just do me in. Right, and it's you're an only love. child. They love I'm the each only other. child. But she's a Scorpio, and she's Greek, and she's four nine. Oh, honey, she's an inch from being a, a little person. And not that there's anything wrong with it, because I actually love little people. Right, but, but she's not technically a little person. No, but she's a little oompa loompa. Well, she's going to shrink as she gets older. She's already. So tell her she will eventually be considered a little person. Does yeah. she get any oh, handicap, handicap parking or anything from she's that? She's been getting that for a while. Oh, that's right. She's been dying On for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, she's always dying. I she mean, said that like, handicap. She got the uh, original <laughs> handicap parking. I know. I mean, I told her, I said, now I'm turning my phone off. So if you have a real emergency, you need to call 911 and not me. <laughs> Does she have a yeah. life alert? No, but she needs one. But you know, those people would probably turn it off because they, she'd push that button and they oh, would just get be... like, oh, God, it's Sharon Jean. Turn it off. So just her name is Sharon Jean. Sharon Jean because she's from originally from East Moline, Illinois. Is she going to listen to this? No, she doesn't even know where to find it. Well, you let's give her a shout her. out. Yeah. Hi, Sharon Jean. Hey, Sharon Jean. <laughs> we think you're amazing. We haven't met you yet, but all the listeners now want to, they want you to do a reality show. She should you have would, her she own would, show. She would. And you know what? If she came in and talked with you, you'd probably have a great. I, I'd love it. You'd have you'd to do it like three parts, four parts. I would yeah. love it. Yeah. She Bring her to the, uh, uh, I can say the set. Bring her yeah. to the taping of Gone. I don't want to do that. You don't bring her out? I wouldn't. But I mean, I'll bring her here if you want and then pick her back up. But I don't want to take her to anything I'm doing. No. No. No, I mean, no, like, no. But you would, I'm telling you, you'd probably end up. Would Park, like she and Park would get along. Oh, my God. She loves Park. Oh, she already does. She already knows She's who a fan Park, of is. Park She's a fan of Park. She loves oh, Park. Oh, okay. So that, that's an ace but in the But the thing right. is, if I want to keep my relationship with Park, I need to keep that one to a minute. Oh, I don't know. Park likes older. older. I can't trust my mom. Your mom's not even that old, first of all. It's not about that. It's about her mouth. Right. Monty can tell you. Yeah. He's a witness. It's tough. It's a tough She's one. got a mouth. No yeah. filter. No filter. She doesn't adjust herself. No boundaries. Uh, no boundaries. So she doesn't adjust herself according to other people. I can tell her, listen, Mom, when you meet this person, now let me tell you how they are, and you need to be aware of, I know, don't tell me. <laughs> and then when they come in, she does the opposite of everything I said. Right. And then there's problems. Kristen Wiig. Oh, do you like her on Saturday? I love her. She played that character on Saturday Night Live. Do you remember where she couldn't keep a secret? Yeah. So oh, they would tell yeah, her, yeah, like, yeah. you know, don't say such and such, such and such. And she, she'd yeah. try and try. And then she'd have to throw herself out the window yeah. from not saying it. That's like your mom. But my mom, besides that, though, my mom makes like things up. Tourette syndrome. Tourette. And she also lies. She's been lying since I was, you but know. But is she really lying? She's, she's lying. She's she blatantly creative. lies. She told me she was the queen of Greece when oh, I was a that kid. that was a great story. Yeah. And yeah. you believed her. Oh. I believed her for like a long time. I believed her. Is that really a lie? It's a lie. I, I asked my well, grandma. That, it was a lie. That you made know. you feel good about her and felt, you thought you were royalty and you well, were no, princess. Well, no, I was pissed because I wasn't where I was living. I should have been living in a Greek <laughs> castle, right? She said, oh, well, I got kicked out of the country. I mean, why aren't we, you know. So you wonder we, where you get your uh, creative imagination from? From my father. No, from your mom. I'm telling it you, my dad. It sounds like, right, Monty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Among other things, yeah. No, that's yeah. <laughs> if well, we can get your dad here. Sounds like we're going to have to meet Sharon Jean oh, for sure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Guys, the hour, I don't know where it goes. Are you yeah. serious? I know. Wow. So, um, that was to fast. be continued, because I want yeah. to do, Bob Bobcat has been kind to listen to my, he likes to listen to our show. Yeah. So, shout out to you, Bobcat and Sean. Yeah, Mr. Bob. Bobcat is amazing, too, Mr. Major, Major music, music producer. producer. LL you guys cool J, Google Bobcat Urban, Grammy Award E-R-V-I-N, winning. and see his lineage in, lineage in the uh, music business. Yeah. So now he's venturing into this new new, uh, new adventure. World, right? And we're looking forward that to being on, on board with that. Yeah. So everyone, keep yeah, your fun. eyes, keep your ears, actually. Ears. Ears attuned for yes. the... Uh, first season of Gone and uh, we'll we'll be promoting it here and we'll have the whole team back That'll be back fun. in. Awesome. And w- where can people follow you guys? Do you want them to follow you on social media? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm at um Cat Katrina 
underscore San Gennetto. Now S-A-N. spell that for everyone. Okay, so it's S-A-N-G-I-N-E-T-O. And the easy way to remember it is Sang in the Ghetto. Oh. <laughs> Which is That's how I was teased. <laughs> Speaking of Sharon, Sharon Jean. I know, but it's not her last name. I know. Oh, we don't get started <laughs> on that. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and where can people stalk you, Monty? They can stalk me at uh, Monty Sharp Instagram. And it's M-O-N-T-I. Yes, S H R P. Like the full Monty. Yeah. He's and only also, a partial. Um, Sharp Art Studio. Okay. Which is a, uh, I like to paint, draw. Oh, make. we didn't even get t- touch on that. Okay. Next time. Yeah. Next time. Artiste. Everyone Sorry. check out M- uh, Monty's artwork. Yeah. Great. That'll be very cool. Great artwork. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, Jasper. You guys are great. This well, has been fun. So much can't wait fun. to work with you. Yes. Yeah, All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Be safe. Peace out. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks for checking out One on One with Jasper Cole. Check out past episodes and get the latest as they're released. Subscribe today on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube.